I pity you Vacam, or Vacam back. Don't you just love it when a series finale is not only late, but also breaks the entire formula completely? Me too, so you will love this video. Little disclaimer is that I wanted to wash my hair before sitting down in front of the camera, but it turns out that they are fixing the boiler in the staircase. So no hot water for you in the morning, my friend. And then I checked it again like 10 minutes ago to see if they already have hot water, but they just closed the water completely, so I don't have any. And the other thing is that I am almost at the 48 hour mark of a 72 hours long water fasting session that I decided to do. I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. I'm feeling pretty good right now, but uh, maybe looking back at the recording, I'm just gonna be like, Ugh. What's happening with me? I'm trying to read a script, but I mean, I can, but not really well. So this entire recording goes to the trash. I feel like that was overacted a little bit. Anyways, <laughs> this is the third and final part of my Pride Month series and it is already late, so let's jump into it really quickly. The piece I will show you today belongs in a series of non-binary monster characters that I started with this OC named Normally Sparkle Face, who is a ghoul and I made that picture earlier this year and then for Pride Month I made three other characters, all Frankensteinian monsters. So far, Bubbles Icti, based on the intersex pride flag and sunshine honeybee based on the bisexual pride flag whose colors I unintentionally switched up to a not insignificant degree. More about that in my previous video. The third character is based on simply the non-binary pride flag with yellow, white, purple and black. If you haven't seen the last two video, I made these three characters based on different pride flags, but I wanted to keep them really subtle and not even use the original brightness and hue of the official colors. Also, my goal with this series was to represent not just different and diverse people under the non-binary umbrella, but all of them have something about the hard side and struggles of being a queer person and about one's relationship with their own body. Okay, so I want to work on the third entry now, which is only a sketch right now, but I wanted to say this beforehand. I completed these two pieces and I fell into a trap because I stepped exactly once to talk about the first one and uh, I didn't record any audio and voiceover or anything for the second one. I just have a bunch of footage of its creation, but not a single word about it. So I will need to come up with something for that. But now that we are at the third picture, I want to talk about it a little bit. So I decided that uh, this person is going to be based on the non-binary pride flag, but not exactly with the skin colors. I want them to mostly have the colorful elements as jewelry, like this piercing, some earrings or, or other thing I want to implement, like an eye color or something along those lines. I still haven't figured it out. And I want this scar to be much less visible than the others. And the reason, I still don't have the entire story of this character, but I want them to be the less obvious queer person from this story. You know, the person who is not so visibly standing out. In my case, this means someone who doesn't have such a distorted appearance with giant scars and discolored skin and all that. I want this character to look almost entirely human with like, with just a regular skin, minimal amount of scars, like I want it to be visible, but I don't want it to be like stitched all the way through. I want this to be a mostly healed scar and not a really deep scar. So it's just, uh, you can, you can see it clearly, but you know it's not going to be the classic scars on the face element. I came up with this idea that this character is going to be the one who makes the heart necklaces for the others. They will have one on their own, which is going to be like an empty heart, so it's just going to be the outside and it's going to be hollow. And while doing that, they will have some sort of like workplace here. Either it's going to be a workplace with like the little ingredients that are used for creating the necklaces. And there will be like a little tool holder with stuff sticking out of it. Either this one or there will be a little gift box you know, this kind of stuff that has like the wrapping around it and uh, they will they will be placing one of the heart necklaces into this and there will be a hand here holding it. Obviously, I would replace this somewhere else like here or something. I want to first get the face right and the expression right. And what I was going for with the very first sketch that I made of this character was like this really sad 
melancholic face but instead i decided that i want to have a much more uh, positive i want to have uh, this character with a satisfied look on their face over the creation of these necklaces that are going to be the gifts to the other characters and it's going to be like a slight smile on the face maybe just a tear of happiness of course because i will i will just add the tears that's a rule you have to just do this and uh, i want to talk about the story of this character a little bit later first let's get into it and uh, create the first working version of uh, this character that i named violet rosemary and it's going to be spelled like that of course and uh, let's make a first version of them with like flat colors and all that and i will do an update telling you about the rest let's go hey this is me from the editing room which is the same room i'm just editing now i'm almost finished with the entire video and then i just realized that i didn't talk about the name of the character which is violet rosemary but it is spelled in a really inconvenient way you see the first name violet is referring to being always questioned and having to explain themselves uh, to people who are not familiar with them and the second name is just literally two feminine names slapped together which is referring to people seeing them as overly feminine and then questioning their uh, claim of being non-binary and the full title of this piece is the not so secret secret secrecies of violet rosemary referring to them being openly out but many people not knowing it and not recognizing them as non-binary because of their presentation and i hope that is the only thing i forgot about this video because i've been fasting for 62 hours with 10 more to go and i don't know what's going on anymore <laughs> The biggest things about the other two characters of this series was really the unique colors and almost non-human elements, but Violet was uh, made to look less obvious and the lifting had to be done with the other elements of the character. That's where the fact comes in that uh, they don't have massive scars. I mean, they have, but they are not really fresh, hinting that Violet was the first monster to be created in this whole timeline. At one point I was thinking about adding multiple hair colors too, but I ended up cutting that idea. I wanted to keep the natural hair color and instead of colorful skin, I added a set of piercings that all are in the colors of the non-binary pride flag along with a ring that is actually just the flag so anyone who is not immediately going to recognize the piercings will get that one instead. Okay, this is the second day of the recording that I did last time. Okay, let's see what we have so far. One little detail that was kind of an accident is, see, I've been using this eyeliner to do my lipstick and I, I saw this, some amount of irritation towards my lower lip today and I decided that, okay, I don't want to cover all of it, but I've seen that somebody draw a little heart shape on their lips before and I was like, okay, let's, let's try it out. Let's try how that looks. And I liked it so much that I decided to add it to the picture. Violet now has some nice heart-shaped lips without any explanation, of course, but what we have so far, here we go. If I just turn off the jewels and scars for a second i don't know where that splatter came from loading yes i decided to add some clothing to the character because uh, it would really require uh, some geometry towards the entire upper chest and i really wasn't feeling that right now also i kind of scrapped the idea of including this little uh, crafting table i'm i'm not sure what i want to do with this whole idea but i really intend this character to be the creator of the necklaces let's just really quickly go and break this character down because i didn't do it for the first two pictures so if this is the first video somebody watches from me here's a little sneak peek to how i'm working let's see first what we have is we have this sketch layer i do have the original little doodle wow look at this transformation we have the sketch layer which is going to be completely covered in the rendering stage but i i clean it up all the time so it could actually be a line art if i decided to keep it in base color plus one base color for the hair for the other monsters i actually made multiple colors on this layer or in this group of layers at the base of the entire character that is like the easiest way to do it and then i generally have these three layers that i always add one of them is the blush which is just one regular layer with a really saturated and bright red that is going to indicate the places of the face where uh, the skin is not so thick so we can see a lot of blood flow under it we have the tint which is a really faint yellow to the top of the head and a really faint blue to the bottom 
of the character, bottom of the face, and this is meant to simulate the feeling of seeing someone outside with yellow sunlight and blue bounce light from the sky. Just makes the character a little bit more interesting. Details, we just have the color of the eyes, we have the whites of the eyes and we have the lip color. Uh, I should have actually added the color of the eyes, I don't know yet what is going to be. The color of the eyes, we have some colorization for this layer because I like to colorize my sketch layer which is then going to be built into the final rendering. We have a first layer of shadows literally just separating the entire face into a dark and a light version and since we have uh, the little tint and the little blush it doesn't feel like a marble statue it actually already feels like a human being who has like blood flow and reflectivity on their skin second layer of shadow is just the smaller parts of the face that are going to be darker i added a third layer of shadow i don't really use this but i really felt that this part of the torso wasn't dark enough so i just uh, did it as a really quick solution by the way all of these shadow layers are in multiply mode and i happen to use 40 percent opacity you can always change it and uh, see how it's going to look for you one layer, one layer of light in hard light mode, literally just the light. I am thinking that maybe I will add the second one, I don't know yet. We have some highlights, highlights for the eyes. I should have actually added this to the lips. This, this intermission is just the collection of things that I should have done. We have the cloth, literally just one layer and some extra dark part to it. For the scars and the jewels and all that for. So I just simply have a line for the main scar and the little dots for the holes where the stitches used to be. For the jewels, we have a base layer we have shadow one, shadow two that I only applied to the yellow elements because they weren't dark enough by default and we have the light that is the one light reflection on all the pieces of jewelry and we have some cast shadows created by the jewelry and by the skin that is pressed in for example like here it's not just one little shadow from the little piercing it is actually like an entire dip in the skin itself and that is what we have so far we have just a simple gradient for the background i don't know what i want to do with the background i want to do some some sort of blue because it is going to contrast nicely with the natural looking skin colors you you, you pretty much already see see what it is going to look like in the end it just all has to come together and i have to refine everything and you know add stuff like the color of the eyes you know the all the missing lights and shadows like the highlight of the lips proper rendering on the hair that is not just a few layers uh, slapped on top of it which is pretty much the same with the entire face we will figure it out and let's continue an important part of this character was uh, going for a queer person who isn't standing out that much someone who isn't a stereotype that many people project on the entire community. Actually it's funny how Violet would stand out in almost any group by having so many piercings but looks uh, like outstandingly ordinary among the other uh, monsters from this series. I know another well-known stereotype in every original character being overdone with uh, the most extreme color patterns and accessories. Somewhat like what every person from this series ended up as so I included a design like this one. Not outstanding as a queer person, not outstanding as a Frankensteinian monster but still one that belongs in both groups and may turn out to be one of the biggest supporters and even a role mother for some of them. Including more of the body for the purpose of showing the environment allowed me to add the hand of the character this time and I only added one hand in the end and not exactly in the way I intended for some time but it was a great opportunity to make a hand that was also attached to the character along with a rather stereotypically masculine white tank top to add those uh, little touch of androgyny to Violet. I added one necklace, the one that belongs to Bubbles Ikti to the table waiting to be wrapped along with the others and I added the initials of the characters SH for Sunshine Honeybee and S for Normally Sparkle Face and I also intentionally positioned one of the boxes on top of a hidden box showing that there are more boxes hidden in this pile indicating future characters of this series that are obviously coming at this point because I took so much time trying to pick myself together and record this video that I'm already almost finished with the next one from the series but that's gonna be you know 
some future video. For the workshop, I added just a table and a board with some tools, and I did look up some tutorials on basic jewel making in order to get those tools that I really needed and to make this uh, environment a little bit more believable. I will link the ones I heavily referenced into the description, but putting them next to the gift boxes turned out to be a really clear and readable element, at least I hope so, so this entire picture is not just a simple portrait, but also tells a little story and places the character into a little scene. Towards the end, I added one more thing that was a slightly discolored skin to one side of the face and uh, to most of the body as well. I was sitting on the fence with this one idea for a while, but I added it for storytelling purpose, even if I liked the fully saturated version a little bit better. A funny last minute fix was the shoulder. I asked a few people on Discord what they thought about it, and someone mentioned the shoulder and the collarbone being out of place, and only then I noticed that the entire shoulder was completely dislocated, so I ended up putting uh, it back to its original place and touching up the entire tank top and like some of the neck area as well. Obviously the tear in the eye couldn't be skipped, but this time it's a more hopeful tear than before, Violet thinking about the moment of their friends receiving the handmade gifts, which are obviously a symbol of their bond and support towards each other. Now we reach the end of Pride Month and I'm recording this on the 11th of July. I mean, I completed the pieces during Pride Month and I showed them to people during that time. And then I totally didn't rush making this video in the end, but I thank you very much for watching. As I said, I'm already working on the next monster of the series along with other projects, you know, the other 100 projects that I always talk about but never deliver on. Expect those to be released soon. And have a nice day, create something, even if it involves creating some relatable monster characters that will be only appreciated by the people who manage to relate to them. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun by doing that. Farewell. One little thing I forgot to mention is that I came up with the names Violet and Sunshine. Now I came up with Sunshine first and then came Violet and why is that important? It's because these two names are a really, I should say, obscure reference to the first episode of American Horror Story. It's from a scene that I feel nobody remembers. You know, I'm really glad we named you Violet instead of our second choice. Which was? Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Come on, you gotta admit, it's funny. So yes, Sunshine and Violet are a reference to that one little scene.